Hi, this is Evan Freeman at Taylor Restaurant in New York City. Molecular mixology, it's a term that the press is using to describe a lot of things that I'm doing here at Taylor. Just to go back to the history, really the whole movement of molecular gastronomy and the term came from a French scientist named Hervé Thys, who began applying scientific principles into cooking. A lot of the same experiments that Ferran Adria was doing with his food, he started doing with beverage also, and it became part of his tasting menu. He did a lot of different interesting things with hot and cold foams. One side of the drink was hot, the other side was cold. Original gravities in which things were separated, freezing things, using liquid nitrogen. All this stuff is what's classically considered molecular gastronomy, also applied towards the drink arts. Another thing which fascinates me in making cocktails and doing what I do is playing with an idea of sense memory. People have a really strong sense of flavors uh, from childhood and from different parts in their lives. And one flavor can mean a lot of different things to people. An example of which is when I use cedar in uh, bourbon. That flavor of cedar, for some people, that smell represents their grandmother's house or, you know, an old chest of drawers. For other people, it's the hamster cage because they had cedar in their hamster cage. Um, and then for other people, it's like a sauna smell. So that's a simple idea that really in different cultures and for different people means something else. For some time, we were focusing on classics and mastering classics, making the perfect Manhattan, starting to focus on the basics such as fresh ice and fresh juices and really well-executed drinks. That was really important. Now going forward, now that people have started to master those things, it's about what new techniques can we use, what new flavors can we use. Um, the use of herbs, the use of teas, different infusion methods are all becoming really important. I think different sodas and making your own sodas is becoming a big part of it. Reviving lost liqueurs is important. Getting stuff from other countries that wasn't available is becoming important also. And I think anywhere in the country you can sort of push the envelope. You shouldn't make assumptions that you can only do this in New York and you can only do this in a restaurant like this. A simple idea, a simple regional flavor means a lot to people. Maybe it's a candy or a soda that you had in a part of country that you weren't in. That really becomes a binding thing and in this rapidly changing world where we're becoming interconnected and all cities are starting to be the same and all cultures are almost homogenizing, people are really holding strongly on the flavors that they consider regional things that really identify them and differentiate them from the rest of the world. So something that one person thinks is really strange, another person will really be attracted to. So don't be afraid to try the strangest thing that, that you can imagine.